hello everyone, welcome. As you can see, we're doing a PlayStation game. Was I the only one who, growing up was really creeped out by the, by the, the noise? PlayStation yeah, noise. I, was, I was as well. <laughs> it, it was very like, what the hell is this? So, as you can see probably at the bottom, we're playing Spyro Year of the Dragon. So, commonly referred to as Spyro 3. Um, calls it Spyro 3. Everyone calls it just Year of the Dragon. Oh, God. See, or here's the dragon. This is the third. Year this is the it. third game in the original Spyro trilogy for the PlayStation One. Um, Wait, they were they were good Spyro games. Yes, <laughs> and this was one of the best. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so you're right. So my personal favorite was Spyro Two, and I did a, a. If you guys have been with us for a while, we've done Spyro One. Macy and I did Spyro One. I did Spyro 2 solo, and now I brought Eduardo on for Spyro 3 because, well, Spyro 2 by myself was kind of, yeah, Boring. Plus, we both played Spyro 3. Yeah. I was less familiar with the first two to begin with anyway. Yeah, so... This is, this is the first one I jumped on when I got a PlayStation mm -hmm. when I was, like, what was it? How old was I in 2000? It was 8. Yeah. Was eight. See, when I got my PlayStation in 96, 97? Mm-hmm. Spyro, or whenever Spyro 2 came out, I think it was 98. I think it was. So, 98, 1998 is when I got my PlayStation, I and I... This up, because this is going to bother and me. And I got, I got Spyro 2 as my first game, and holy crap, I loved Spyro 2. That still is my favorite one, even though this one is obviously better. Um, this one just has, this one I just feel is, you know... It, it, it's longer, it's much longer, because you have 150 collectibles instead of... 64 like in the first game mm -hmm. now i mean also something that i that i didn't realize this until i went back and played the first one two and three are actual games yes like, they have they have a story they have a soul they have everything well, the first one has a story but it's like comparatively to the second and third one yeah it could have they, they could have been anything yeah they could have li it could have literally just started spyro just doing stuff yeah so yeah, th these games definitely have much stro stronger story than the, uh, the previous much stronger game. Story. Um, and any game after this, I don't consider to be a real Spyro game. So uh, no. anything from the Legend of the Dra uh, Dragonfly or Enter the Dragonfly, whatever the hell it is, uh, especially Skylanders, that no, 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 that does not exist to me. So um, as we can probably, you know, extrapolate from the cutscenes that we're talking over, and I didn't bother to put in subtitles for this up, this this game. Basically, you know, I mean, it's not like they're, you're missing much. Dialogue is not a very important and if you haven't thing. played this game at this point, you're on fault. So true, but I, I'm gonna say, you know, with with this game, there's not a lot of dialogue, especially a dialogue that does not have text boxes. Most dialogue does have a text box. No big deal. Spyro um, so, 2 was actually 99. Spyro 1 was 98, then it was 99 was Spyro 2, then 2000 was okay. Spyro 3. Okay. So, you got it. either way, we, we have to go save the dragon eggs that someone stole, and we have to find out why they stole them. So, that's pretty much our objective. And, you know, the way we're going to do this series is um, we are going to do uh, one video per level. Mm -hmm. Now, the exceptions to that are... Uh, home worlds, which are notoriously shorter than like actual proper levels, because all it is is collect, collect all the gems and collect, and the, collect the eggs, the five eggs that are in every home world. Right, and those are usually just sitting around. You don't have to do anything special to get uh, them. Sometimes, so, like you shouldn't say special because sometimes it's complete this tiny little task, like fly to this island or you or know, swim underwater or. Yeah. Or, you know, sometimes learn to, learn to f use the superfly power up in this ep in this level. Exactly. Um, like it's nothing. They do ask you to do things sometimes, but, but not it's... like some others. Was like, oh, you got to wrangle up all the dinosaurs or blah exactly. blah blah. It's like, like there's no mini games involved or anything. Like right. That. For the most part, they're kind of just sitting around with very low requirements in order for you to they're have right. to get yeah. them. Yeah. Um, now, certain areas you are forced to talk to Bianca, who is this rainbow thing flying around. Yeah, she and, is like the sorceress's apprentice. Right. So, oh god, don't that movie was terrible. Yeah, I was trying to. Nicholas Cage that. and his. Uh, I don't know. So, can I just say something about Nicholas Cage? Why? <laughs> because Declaration of Independence. <laughs> National security, duh. So, so, 
we're going to be talking with Bianca every here uh, now and again, you know, uh, either through text boxes like this or cutscenes or what have you. Very angry. Also, she has no hands. No, she, she has, like no, she has like pointers. Yeah, flippers, if you will. <laughs> I think it's funny that the most detailed character in the entire game is Spyro. He yeah. has to be because he's, he's you. You see him all the time. Yeah. And, and but yeah, it's like you, there are lots of you know undetailed things. And since this was originally a PS1 game, uh, since it was such a well-received game, Sony decided to put it on the PlayStation Network. Now, when they did that. I guess they didn't optimize it for the PS3 because for whatever reason... There's random slowdowns. The, yeah, and it's not even for video either. You, you kind of just heard it if you had listened. If uh, if we don't talk, you could probably hear it, but... Yeah, you hear the music I, just... I, I, tr I, tried to get a, I tried to get around him. I tried really hard, and you can, you can but I ran it, into the wall. It's, yeah, it's very easy be, to do, and I screwed it up. Yeah, it, it, you just gotta be quick is all it is. But you gotta do the glide thing in order to get an egg. Yeah, see, it's like little tasks like this. Nothing that's gonna, like... You're not gonna get, end up having to rage quit or anything like that. Right, they're it's very, just... very easy. Like, one of them that I think is the most difficult is actually in the third home world, and I'll explain that when we get to it, mm -hmm. but... It, it's really, really well hidden, and you'll also, never... Also, I really like every home world, too. Every home world is really nice. The only one I do not like is probably Midday Gardens. Only really? The, I don't know. It just seems... Actually, this one. This one seems kind of plain. Also, it's really cool that each one of the home worlds is based, up, is based around a different time of day. Right, which... And it's weird because... The only thing I'm trying to think of is that you have uh, Sunrise Gardens, so morning... Uh, midday garden, so noon, afternoon. Is this Sunrise evening. Gardens? Yep. Uh, evening Lake. Yes, I am. I, I was the one that played this. I know, but I'm just like, I, they use gardens twice? Oh, sun sunrise, sunrise Spring, I'm sorry. That's it. Sunrise Spring, uh, Midday Gardens, um... Evening Lake. Evening Lake. And then it's Midnight Mountain. Midnight Mountain, right. Now, each home world will have a friendly character, such as the person we're kind of just ignoring right now. Yeah, because I... Because <laughs> you can't do anything with him until you have at least 400 gems anyway. Uh, so you gotta wait. Two, two oh, or 300, sorry. Something, something like that. It's, yeah. You can actually free her by just doing the gems in the home world. So. Yeah, which is the whole point. Um, and I'm trying to like jump over, because sometimes you can, other times you can't. It's, it's just, very finicky. It's just easier if you just go up the steps. Right, so, and, and you know, this game is a lot of fun. If you guys haven't played it, play it. It's Like I said, it's on the PlayStation Network. It's also, only, I think it, it's weird when the music cuts out. When it goes to loop again, and all you hear is just this running sound. Yeah, it does that. That it's does weird. get annoying very quickly. It does get um, But yeah, the it's on the PlayStation Network. It's relatively cheap. It's like five bucks. Uh -huh. So I would which get is it. a steal for a game as good as this. Yeah, if you if you guys haven't played it, play it. Get it, play it. I also love how Spyro retains all his power ups from two. Yes, that like is... he can head bike, he can climb up stairs, or not stairs, ladders. Um, he can also swim underwater yeah. and all that other stuff. Which he couldn't do in the first one. None of that was available to him. And then they explained it away by saying these were like limitations for him being such a young dragon. Right, and now that he's getting older and older, he's yeah. able to do these things. Yeah, and then he, he was taught certain skills by certain characters in the second one, if I remember right. And then Correct. now he's able to do these things. Yeah, so, you know, we have all these abilities, and it's great, because, you know, when we bought them in the second game, that cost us quite a lot of cash. It also was more rewarding then, because it actually felt like you were progressing, which is something I feel like is lacking in this one. That it is, It never feels yeah. like you're becoming better. More, yeah, you, you don't feel like, oh, I have to go back to this level because I now have this ability, or whatever the case yeah, is. Yeah, it's there's just... Al there's only really a couple times that you go back to levels, and that's mainly for your... Uh, I your, guess the way they traded it all. friends, I guess. Yeah, I think that's how they traded that, is instead of your personal abilities, it's the abilities of the allies you, that you can play as. And as, also, Sparks. Now, Sparks, you don't have to go back, necessarily. Like, you don't have to go back and do a level like that no. you already partially did. No, you have to complete <laughs> you have all to, the levels. You have to complete the levels and beat the boss for that home world. Yes. And then you have to go back to the world and do the Sparks level, and that'll give Sparks Yeah, there's power. A, the sign um, for that Which is actually I'm, right there. And I'm going to ignore... Oh, I, I, you can't. I got when sucked you, into reading it. Yeah, that's actually where... Um, when you complete all the, when you complete the worlds here, and then you can fly the, the hot air balloon to Midday Gardens, 
you fight yeah, a boss in between. Exactly. Um, which is actually one of the more enjoyable bosses. I really enjoyed the first boss. I actually kind of glitched out in this in this video in this, oh, <laughs> in this game in this last fight. Now you notice I did a little cut there. I actually missed that two the two gem yeah, there. And then and I was running. Forever. I was running around for literally like five minutes just yes. trying to find it. Yeah. And I didn't think, oh, I missed this one, so I should go back. But you know, yeah. hey, whatever. Also, that level complete thing that they show is the most satisfying thing in this game. Right, and that that I usually try to do that before I leave a level, unless I know I'm not going to be able to for yeah, whatever reason. There's very few levels that if you um, that you there are very few levels that you can't complete the first time you go into them. Correct. Uh, one of them actually is where if you noticed I did ignore. Um, if you play through this game and you do not unlock Sheila, you just go right into the first um, homeworld, uh, Sunny Villa, you have to get Sheila in order to beat that level 100%. So we generally suggest to do, to do the Sheila level first and then go back to um, any of the levels in that homeworld that need her. Now generally that goes for any ally, so if you have uh, Sheila, get Sheila first. Yeah. If you can get Sergeant Bird, do Sergeant Bird, etc. etc. Yeah. So, you know, um, also every level has um, has an area that you can't do, or not every level, but one level in every home world mm -hmm. has an area within it that you have to get the the character from the next home world before you can do it, except for the first one. No, no, there's one. No, oh yes, um, there is. Yes, there yeah, is. There's I'm one sorry. where you have to get Sergeant Bird in the next home world before. Before you, you can, can get it 100%. Yeah, before you can get 100% in that world. Uh, right. So, so there's always a reason that they're having you go back to these older levels. Right. So we freed Sheila. We actually paid Moneybags, who's in this world somehow. Who, of course, is also Australian. Correct. Well, Moneybags isn't Australian. Oh, she is. Yeah, Sheila is, because he's a kangaroo. Yeah, and that's kind I said, of, of course. That's kind of obvious, but... Yeah. I thought you were talking about uh, I thought you were talking about uh, money bags, but yeah, money bags is in this world somehow, and you know he's still as much of a greedy bastard as he was in the second game. So if 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 you for those of you who've never played a PlayStation game and don't know why their eyes and stuff are all weird, they're not really changing any polygon. They're actually just expanding the polygons that the textures are na uh, nailed to, yeah. and that's what gives them facial expressions and eye movements and stuff like that. It's really weird. Is it weird if I kind of like that? Like I think it yeah, looks goofy, it, but I it like looks it. Goofy, and it, that's well, that's what we grew up with. That's how that's how they did it. Yeah. It also makes it a lot simpler to animate things, but. Also, you're not animating like uh, pupils or facial expressions as much as you think you yeah. are. Also, I don't think it would work now in high definition. I think it would l actually look legitimately like just absolutely strange and weird. Yeah, it, it, in this era, this th this was beautiful, but nowadays, no, I don't you think can't it would do that. Work. Yeah. So we're gonna be doing Sheila's Alp, which is the first ally level, and each time you unlock an ally, you have to clear out her level. Before or she's available, he or she is available for use. Yeah, for use in other levels. And their their home level is really cool too. Yeah, I like the levels in this game. The level design is really fun. Mm -hmm. There's only one or two levels that are kind of annoying. Um, one of them is in the third home world, I believe. Yeah, third home world, uh, <laughs> evening lake. Um, but one of the other things about this game is the music was composed by Stuart Copeland and someone else. Uh, unlike the first two games where Stuart Copeland did all the music by himself. He did it completely on his own. In this game he had a co a co uh, writer for the for the music and things like that. The one thing I will say that I don't like about Sheila is her movement. I don't like how whenever she hops I never feel like I'm it, it's in very like, difficult to control. Yeah like Spyro's very precise. Sheila feels like she's not. And that's probably because she's hopping. Yeah, and it, like, if I get close to an edge, I get anxiety, because I'm like, oh, am I gonna, like, is she gonna give that extra yeah. hop that I'm gonna fall over the edge? Yeah. With, so. With, so, you know, and also you gotta remember, with, um, mm -hmm. with these allies, they're, they're a big part of the game, but they had two, basically they used the Spyro 2 engine for movement for Spyro. Spyro 1 had its own, and then they revamped it for Spyro mm -hmm. 2. Spyro Which is 3, why he also has the same abilities. Right. In Spyro yeah. 3, they just took the engine and they had to add in the stuff for the, the allies, which for Sheila, since she's the only one that really doesn't walk, per se, 
It gets really awkward. Sergeant Bird isn't much better at control either. Yeah, Sergeant Bird has to be the one I hate controlling the most. Yeah, he's really slow he's, and... He, his, his movement's awkward. Yeah, very um, awkward. Well, the one thing I wanted to say, if I remember right, in the, um, the, 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 his friend's home worlds, they, they don't, unlike every other level in the game, it only has three eggs that you can get. Or is it the standard five? I forget. No, uh, it's three. It's three in the, yeah, so, so if you only get three, don't freak out. That is, you know, that's what it's gonna be. Right, and if you, if you guys are playing this game and you want to know what your totals are, like what eggs you still have to collect, uh, if you go into, if you press select, or it'll take you to the atlas, or you can press start and... Oh, you can, yeah, you can injure your friends. And Sometimes I, they have very entertaining animations. Which is always fun. Like, you can set them on fire, Spyro, and they hop yeah. around or something. I just keep kicking this rock until it so, you know, you can go to the Atlas and see what uh, eggs you have left and how many gems you have for the level and how many are left in the level. Um, or you can press start and go to Atlas and blah, blah, blah. But you can do that for any of the homeworlds, uh, each of the individual levels, the Sparks levels, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, now, in this series, what we plan on doing is having, like I said, each level is individual video, except for the homeworld and the ally, and then the speedway and the boss. So the ally and the homeworld will be in one video, the speedway and the boss will be in its own video, and every other level will be individual. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that I found was the best way to uh, kind of spread this out and keep the videos roughly the same length for each 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 time so yeah because everything is for the most part it's gonna be the the everything can be completed in about the same amount of time correct like not to say that the that the the game like the one, game like, is short or yeah. repetitive or whatever it's no, it the really game, isn't the game can be very difficult sometimes um it just just fluctuates yeah and, and pl I've, being that i've played this so many times mm -hmm. it's it's like it's very it's relatively easy for me there are certain eggs that are really difficult for no, it, always be difficult. Which we'll get into when we get to them, and yeah. we'll point them out like six times just so you know they're difficult. Yeah. But um, with uh, addition uh, with the whole episode listing kind of thing, we're you going got hit when yeah, you fell I, down. I don't know how that happened. I got hit again, and he wasn't doing anything. So I that think, was. I think it's just because like, uh, there's some enemies that that count as a hit if you get touched on a certain area. I know, but like it's a guy. It's a, it's a mountain rhino. It shouldn't hurt me. But it does. So, uh, what the um, other videos that we're going to be doing is the each piece is the Sparks levels. Now, there are going to be two Sparks videos, uh, each with two Sparks levels in them, and then one final video for the very final bonus world kind of thing uh, that we're going to be doing. So, that's pretty much how this whole series is going to go. The one thing I do know not like about this is when you get a life as an ally, it shows up Spyro's head. It doesn't show up the yeah the allies head, which would have been a nice. But I guess little it's detail. because I think it's because then not to confuse people that oh it's only for them it's no it's for every for all the characters. I I, I guess it's just one of those. I just thought it would have been a nice little touch. I thought because so. it's like you know you're not playing a Spyro right now, so eh, it is what it is though. Um, it never really bothered me all that much. Um, yeah. But then again, also, if you since you have that one one up in the home world immediately as soon as you start, most people would assume, oh, if you get that, you see Spyro's head come down. Mm -hmm. You get it as Sheila in this level. Oh, her head comes down, but the number still increased from when Spyro was had how many left Spyro. Uh, it could have also just been like a like they just limitation about it. or it, limitation. Or yeah, something. it could have been something. I don't know. I mean, like I said, it it was never something that bothered me, so I never thought about it further than. Yeah. Okay, I got True. Life. And there's that last gem. Yes, the last one that I forgot to get. I, don't know. I can't tell you how infuriating that is. Just to not know where the one gem is. <laughs> it's the most infuriating thing. And that's why they introduced... And this is weird. In the second game, they had the gem thing where you could hold all shoulder buttons and it'll point you here. In this game, it's a Sparks power-up. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much it for, for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to go do Sunny Villa. Um, which is ancient Rome, so we'll, uh, we'll see you guys then. Bye.